a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. John the Baptist appeared preaching in the desert of Judea and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance and do not presume to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now, the ax lies at the root of the trees. Therefore, every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance. But the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of the Lord. Last week, I attempted to introduce us to the Gospel of Matthew, who we're going to read from this year. And if you recall, I said that Matthew writes to a Jewish audience living in present-day Damascus, Syria, who believed that Jesus was the Messiah. And all through his gospel, he's going to try to explain how Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophecies. And he will begin a section of something that Jesus does by quoting the prophet. Secondly, he's writing in about the year 85, and by now, much of the church is becoming Gentile rather than Jewish, and particularly the Jewish leadership, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, are resisting and saying that no Gentile can be saved. Today's gospel is is a classic introduction to all of that. First of all, Matthew introduces John the Baptist by quoting the prophet Isaiah saying that this is one who will come to proclaim the way of the Lord. And then Matthew has John the Baptist wearing camel's hair and eating locusts and wild honey. Why? Because the Old Testament prophet Ezekiel wore camel hair and ate locusts and wild honey. And the Old Testament prophecy was that Ezekiel would return to announce the coming of the Messiah. And then Matthew has John the Baptist turn to the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and he calls them brood of vipers. He sets up the tension that's going to exist between them and Jesus throughout the whole of Matthew's gospel. Jesus speaks of mercy and healing and forgiveness. They speak of judgment and condemnation. I have taken to reading Pope Francis's daily mass homily. They're very brief, maybe three minutes long, and they've become my meditation. But I finish reading them and I sit there and I say to myself, this man knows Jesus. I wish I knew Jesus like he does. And because he knows Jesus, he speaks as Jesus speaks, about mercy, about healing, about forgiveness, about inclusion. This past week, a group of four cardinals, including an American, stood up in open protest to Pope Francis. Though they did not use the word directly, they're accusing him of heresy. And what's the subject? What it always is, sex. Do they ever get bent out of shape about the way women are treated in parts of the world? 
about how children are sold into slavery or abused, about these poor immigrants fleeing violence and hatred and death to try to find a safe place for their children to grow up? Do they ever get bent out of shape about the poor? No, they want judgment and condemnation, and they want to be judge, jury, and executioner. And listen to Matthew's gospel this week, this year, and you will hear how Jesus deals with this same thing, and watch how patiently Francis will deal with it. Every time I come into this room, I marvel at the beauty of it. I think more than anything, I marvel at the vision of Father Cauley in building this in 1903. These parishioners in those days were poor Irish immigrants. They were earning between five and $10 a week. And yet he put together a building that cost $180,000. The company who did the restoration in here four years ago told me that to replicate this building today, would be a bare minimum of $48 million. And I think that staggering sum was similar to the 180,000 in Father Cauley's day, and yet he went forward with it. But if you and I don't know Jesus, then this room, everything about it, and any reason for coming here absolutely makes no sense whatsoever. Listen to Matthew this year and get to know Jesus. Amen.